All right, part four of this video. This is the next day, so I have slept since part three, and uh, these parts are finished, so these are the very first parts off of the King Room printers, and uh, let's inspect them. And I'll go over anything else that I still see. I'm just waiting on that screen to start going crazy. I touched it. Okay, it isn't going crazy, that's good. All right, so check this out. So we did, this is gonna be a nice myriad of prints. So right here, this is squishy, so I did some TPU right out of the box. And uh, I mean, that looks really, really good in my opinion. I mean, I'm not seeing from my eyes any Z-banding. You know, we got our supports we're gonna remove here, but this is a larynx, this is your throat, um, essentially. And, and I printed this for a company that was testing well, was teaching how to put a tube down somebody's throat, so this was uh, their their sample. I ended up doing like 50 of these. Uh, but this is for a different guy, so he's going to paint this and use it for a school project. So that's cool. And then did my, my fabled business card holder. I really enjoy printing these for the gearheads. This is a LS9 block, and I put my my logo and stuff on it what I'll generally do is print this out and I'll, I'll give it to people and and the the retail cost if I'm gonna charge somebody for this it's right around 25 to 40 dollars depending on the the printer settings you run it on um, and I'll generally then charge them another five to ten dollars if they want to put their name on it uh, but if it's got my name on it and I put my business cards in it I'll just leave it somewhere um, because you know what is this cost to you as a 3d printer and uh, then you get to leave your business cards at, at different places. So anytime, I'm a big car guy, so anytime I go to a different car shop. Uh, but yeah, oh, this is what I wanted to do. Okay, let's do a side-by-side KP3S stock, KP5M stock. So, I mean, the, the layer lines look, I mean, to me, I'm going to look with my eyes, not through the camera at the moment, so sorry if the camera gets a little goofy. I mean, they look fantastic. I mean, there's a couple little strings here as far as just pulling off a perfect part. I mean, all those could just be instantly evaporated with, you know, one little brush of a, of a torch. And I'm sure I can tune the settings a little bit. But this is, this is a really good test because you've got some, some decently sharp angles here. And, and you can see it did, it did great with no supports, at least in my opinion. Um, I can see a little bit of that pattern on the inside. Interesting. Now this was also run at, I believe, 75 millimeters a second. So this was this was cooking as far as maybe not cooking, but it was, it was running fairly quick. Yeah, we'll just hold this up here. So I mean, this one looks pretty dang good too. I do see. I think in this printer setting, I've got a couple of spots. Yeah, see even here, where where it's missing just. A smidgen of filament but it seems to be on both so I'm curious why that is comment if you know why that is I think it might be something related to this you see how thin it is you can't like there's actually a hole right there see this is some of the stuff that on this specific model I brought it into Tinkercad and I tried filling in like there was errors up here there was an error here uh, you know some of these weren't there and then like right down here these were just sticking out, and I figured out that, hey, if I just put a little triangle going there, now it doesn't need supports. So I put triangles on each one of those to make it a supportless print, um, and then I re-uploaded it. So this guy is on Thingiverse. But yeah, um, that print looks great, that print looks great. Let's look at, so we got some nylon up here. Now nylon can be a little tricky. Might have to work on my settings some more. So this looks, let's see, the camera, I'm having a hard time getting it to focus on just, when there's so much to focus on, it doesn't want to focus on the thing in the middle, so I have to kind of like make my hand big. So that, I mean, this looks pretty good to me. It's still got a little bit of stringiness, and nah, I'm seeing a couple of things. I mean, the real test is, does that break? And it does, so it shouldn't do that, so that's not good. Yeah, I've definitely got to work on my settings for nylon. I think it was just running too fast. So, I was seeing kind of how fast it would go. Let's check the other one. And, uh, yeah, I think I, I think I pushed its limits. 
Yeah, we can see the the problem areas are in these little small spots here, and uh, let's see, yeah, yeah. See, I wouldn't. I'm not gonna deliver these. Let's check this one. So this one's PETG, same part. Oh, <laughs> even worse. We got a layer shift. Okay, so let's see this. Uh, yeah. So it got a little excited there. Now don't. Don't look at this and say, oh no, you know, that printer's real bad. It can't print these things offhand. No, it, it can. Because I actually, I got a decent one earlier. And I changed the setting just a little bit. And it, it doesn't look like it helped. Um, yeah, I've just got to... So, so here, for instance, for reference. So those don't look good. Those, okay, see? Right here? That holds. So this is plenty strong. Um, and it's not gonna break. I mean, this is just the back of an outlet, so it's not too big a deal. But but let's look at this one right off my my KP3S. Yeah, that's that's what it should look like. That's a good print right there. You've got supports. You might have a couple of strings, you know, five, but not a uncountable number like that. I mean, that's got you know strings all over the place. So and, and this is a a nice strong copy. You know, we can we can sit here and and try to you know what's breaking. What you're hearing right there is the supports breaking. That's staying strong. So so yeah, these are great parts. I'm just gonna keep busting those out, and uh, I will figure out the perfect settings for that one. Now part of this too, and I know this is this is quite probably a part of it. My AC is right there, and in putting these right in front of cold air blowing I'm pretty sure that uh, that's gonna affect some of my prints and it is kind of doing this but I wanted to test it so, so this is equally as much to figure out what uh, you know what's capable with air blowing on it and what I need to do to maybe stop that because I could possibly you know let's see here I'll stick this little box back here you know maybe if I if I do that yeah see I'm not feeling as much air blowing now so just by doing that you know that'll probably help out a print like this so it's little things like this that can make the difference um you just got to play with it sometimes but uh you know look same filament same brand printer um we can get that quality of print you ju it's just about settings so if you're getting a bad print don't think it's the printer or necessarily the filament um it's most likely the settings when you get some good prints if you're doing production runs um, and then you change your filament and you haven't changed anything, you can start saying, okay, maybe maybe the filament's bad. And it's not even that the filament might be bad, it just might be that that filament likes to run at a hotter or cooler state. So, uh, yeah, last flash. Sprint quality, okay, look, right here. Is that on this one too? It's not on this one. Okay, so this missed just a little bit of that <clears throat> right there. That's probably for the speed. In the sake that it's only a uh, a two-layer wall. Like there's a couple areas, like right here. I can't tell if that's a hole because it missed it. It doesn't look like it. I think it's a hole because the model actually has a hole there. So sometimes these little imperfections, especially like this one too, like that, that's a hole because the model doesn't have an actual. Yeah, you know, see, same on this side. And then look. Where is that at? Oh, no. Look, it's, it's filled in. No, there it is. Yeah, see? The model, the model just has it. So it's still not a perfect model. If you wanted to hop on Thingiverse, download it into Tinkercad, you could clean up some of these small little areas, and it'll print just that much better. Because it's little things like this that could make this print just a little bit smoother, but it's just not quite there. But uh, I'm pretty sure that this stuff... It's going to be a little bit flow related. Because I did turn the flow down. But that top layer looks really good. I mean, if anything, I'll turn the flow up maybe... 2%. Yeah, probably, because we see this, 2%. Probably speed down by 10 millimeters a second, take it down to 60. And yeah, we can see a little bit of gap in here. And then... Uh, <clears throat> Maybe even temperature up? I, mean, I don't know. With a little bit of stringiness, I don't know if it needs temperature up. Maybe temperature up like 2-3 degrees. 
Um, and if anything, temperature down on this one. This much stringiness, that's, that's too high. Um, but otherwise, this is great. And this will clean up. So, thanks guys for checking out the, uh, the prints with me. Sorry, my, my, uh, <laughs> my thing's gonna be long. That screen just comes back and forth from being, from being cleared. So, I did get a response from the factory last night. They did say, hey, our engineers are working on the upgrades now. I'll give you an update when they're ready. So, uh, that's cool. As soon as I get these things upgraded, I'm gonna order a second batch of these. And, uh, yeah, I mean, they got some great parts. I like them. It's a good printer. This is best bang for the buck printer. I mean, you show me another 300 millimeter bed, dual Z with a real nice alignment bearing. I mean, absolutely no Z banding. Nice, sturdy frame, affordable uh, assembly, color touch screen that faces you. Pancake motor direct drive, clear BMG dual gear extruder. I mean, this is overhead filament holder, not on the side. I mean, look at this. Reality, not a direct drive. Has wheels that wear out. Has an overhead filament holder, that's good. Um, what else? Magnetic bed, that's good. Non touch color screen. Um, non-linear rails on any of these or not linear but whatever you call these um, steel on steel that's what I would say you know this is nice because it is literally steel bearings on a steel rod that won't wear out that's fantastic I put steel wheels on aluminum square tubing and the problem with that is is the steel wheels will wear off your coating first and that coating is enough of a distance that you'll need to tighten it back down and you'll get a black mess from it and uh, eventually you just wear into the aluminum. Um, now that takes a long time. It took me about a year and a half to start doing that but yeah you literally wear out these bars. So steel on steel, leave some lube in it, won't ever wear it out. It'll be great. It'll stay solid. Um, I like that a lot. Oh, hold on. Before I even stop this video, gotta un undo a jam. Oh, here it is. It's this one. Brand new rolls, right? Man, they can cause a... They can cause a problem. I mean, this is... This is part of the reason I have this. It's because I realized that if I put it real tall, real high up, there's enough... Um, push. Or not push. Enough distance and pull that it generally won't do that and it won't unbound but like this one here this one's close enough and has such a such a far amount of travel that uh, it can wind up you know going from this end uh, to this end use up the filament swing all the way over there pop a little bit come back around and then it's got a loose bit kind of like you see here anyways I'm ranting but um, <clears throat> yeah if you're having filament issues just try to mount it higher up or further away. That's why I have them like this. You know, this is nice and generally doesn't give me any problems, but I still have had it on some rolls that are just super full. You won't get a problem if you've got it way up there, especially on a small printer. But some of the big ones might give you a little bit of problems. Look at Lolo's. All right, say bye to Lolo's, everybody. Bye-bye.